All right, uh, let's start. So, <clears throat> yeah, we will discuss first uh, about this uh, lecture 11 about detection and segmentation and so on. So, so um, probably you guys understood this slide of, yeah, so the, uh, here, the story in this, the main story about this lecture is that, yeah, so those tasks about uh, object detection and also especially this uh, instance segmentation uh, needs the classification label or uh, some prediction output uh, yeah, corresponding to each pixel, which means that yeah, we need the same number of output as the, the total number of pixels that we have. So in that case, yeah, we just apply the comb layers without uh, reducing the spatial resolutions. So we do not involve any max pooling, right? And then uh, we just uh, uh, impose a proper size of a yeah, proper padding size, so that we just uh, maintain the the total number of width and height, right? But in this case, <clears throat> yeah, this will. Yeah, this yeah this is not actually uh, yeah of, yeah this is not frequently used because it uh, produces a lot of um, yeah a large size of an activation value. So if you remember the VGGNet. I think I explained it already, but yeah. So in this case, yeah, you have to yeah, yeah, closely understand this uh, pattern in terms of their uh, size of the activation map and also the number of parameters as we go through uh, the uh, these uh, layers, and then um, the activation map at the first layer comes as an output. Uh, that is, uh, pro yeah, that is the largest activation map size throughout the entire uh, network architectures in this uh, VGGNS. So, yeah, it is, uh, yeah, it amounts to like uh, three millions of activation map size, right? And uh, why is it so? It is because we didn't reduce the spatial resolution at all, but we used the uh, 64 number of filters. So this uh, 64, which is a uh, lot larger than this uh, 3, um, so that way our activation map size uh, got bigger by the ratio, of, yeah, by the amount of this uh, number of convolution, I mean convolution filters. Okay, so <clears throat> in this case uh, we usually, uh, yeah, in order to avoid this uh, like uh, really significant increase in terms of this uh, activation map size we just uh, gradually reduce the spatial resolution through this uh, max pooling and then uh, we also gradually add the number of channels uh, by adding or using more number <laughs> of filters right so if we just uh, remove the um, uh, max pooling in in this uh, entire stage and then uh, we first use uh, 64 filters and 128 and 256 filters so that we can cover uh, complicated patterns uh, through various uh, different combinations of the previous layers activation pet uh, the filter patterns right so yeah in that case uh, the activation map size uh, around like yeah some yeah around the middle layer in our comp and then uh, if we use more number of uh, filters and then uh, yeah the activation map size will uh, significantly be large uh, than the the, uh, uh, the input one. So yeah, yeah, we will easily get the um, out of memory error, right? So so this is not a practically useful solution. So instead, uh, we use this kind of bottleneck kind of structure. So in this case, yeah, we want the same number of on. I mean, we want the output 
that has the same num yeah same spatial resolution or spatial size as an input but in this case uh, we just uh, use the max pooling um, uh, so that we can properly uh, like maintain uh, not kind of a big size of the um, activation map in the middle and then yeah from here yeah we just uh, increase the, the spatial resolutions so that we uh, obtain this uh, same size of an input uh, that's the spatial size of the um, input yeah input image okay so in this case yeah especially this part yeah so and also this part uh, is called the um, encoder yeah, encoder and this part the letter half is called the decoder because uh, we can view the first uh, half as uh, encoding some meaningful information out of the entire image, right? Just like uh, extracting out some meaningful features through our convolution filters, but uh, the latter part is like utilizing those uh, meaningful information extracted or encoded from our image, we actually decode it into uh, the output uh, that we want. I mean, yeah, in the form of our output, whether it is a pixel-wise label among the um, predefined categories or maybe some uh, instance segment in the case of an instance segmentation it will be yeah it will be like yeah binary classification label uh, label whether it is a foreground or background pixel right in the case of an instance segmentation the pixel wise label is either one or zero depending on whether that pixel is yeah, belonging to the, the particular object of an interest, right? And sometimes, <coughs> yeah, in the case of, yeah, image level classification, uh, sorry, image level, yeah, image translation case, yeah, which we will study in probably in the next lecture uh, based on this uh, generative adversary network, and then, yeah, that will just uh, produce the output uh, in the form of RGB uh, color values. So, although I, I will show this example later, but just to give you some interest. So we want uh, this kind of a task. So, uh, although it is uh, uh, shown in a video, but uh, you can just uh, uh, think of each frame as a separate image, okay? And so each separate image is given in given to our network, and then it will exactly go through this kind of this kind of neural net architecture, which encodes uh, the input image into much smaller uh, spatial size of an activation map. Although the the um, depths will become yeah, thicker and thicker or larger and larger so that we can encode more yeah more I mean uh, various uh, different useful or meaningful patterns and then uh, once we encoded those uh, uh, use uh, meaningful information and then we now turn to the um, decoding phase so that we obtain the final output that has the same resolution spatial resolution as the input but uh, in this particular case the input is the um, image on the left, and the output is uh, also image another image on the right. So, in the case of this output, it is not just a uh, classification label for each pixel. It is just an RGB value. So, in that case, our number of channels at the end as a final output will be just three channels, which is exactly the same as input channels of RGB. Okay. So that will also go through this uh, encoding, encoder and decoder network. Okay, so in this case, uh, yeah, in this lecture, we want to study how to, uh, how to implement or uh, how we design uh, this uh, decoder network, uh, which just uh, increase the number, uh, increase the spatial size, okay? So to that end, we just yeah we uh, sometimes use this uh, uh, unpooling like a max unpooling yeah and also deconvolution and and so on right so at a high level those unpooling and uh, yeah deconvolution uh, plays a role of increasing yeah the spatial resolution of an input okay 
Okay, so <clears throat> given this, uh, um, if we do the um, uh, unpooling, yeah, we can obtain this right by just a duplicate, uh, just uh, copying those values into a larger pixel. So one pixel is becoming two by two pixels of having uh, of the same uh, same value, right? So that's the idea of this uh, unpooling, right? And uh, <clears throat> so related to this. Uh, we, yeah, although it is not directly, yeah, it may not be directly related, but I feel it is, yeah, it it, it has something in common with uh, with what we, yeah, with uh, what we studied before in this uh, inception module. So let's see. So this is the um, uh, inception module of version two, and yeah, I want to focus on this part three by three uh, max pooling, right? So in this case, yeah, if we apply the max pooling, and then the spatial resolution uh, should be uh, reduced by the ratio of this. Uh, uh, this uh, max pooling filter size, right? But in this case, uh, we were able to maintain the same number of uh, spatial resolution. And uh, how did we do that? So, what was the main idea here? So here, um, so max pooling is one way of computing one single output out of some some size of window right and then if we uh, apply the stray size as 3 and then it will produce like a single value per uh, three different pixels right so that's uh, how we downsample or how we reduce uh, the number I mean the size of an image right but in this case yeah we just apply the the window uh, the filter size yeah, filter size is three by three, but uh, the stride size was what? Stride size is one, right? So that was part of, I mean, part of the previous, I mean, the midterm exam, right? So if you studied this part, then I think you guys will remember. So in this case, the stride size is one, right? And then what should be the padding size? To maintain the same uh, input and output activation maps, I mean the size. So it's exactly like the conf, right? So if we apply the uh, three by three conf, and then uh, in order to yeah make the same uh, spatial resolution, we need um, stride size as one, and also the padding size as also one, right? So here, uh, the stride size is one, and the padding size should be one to obtain this. Okay, then, uh, yeah, let me change it as a five by five pulley, and then to have the same size of an output in terms of a spatial resolution, what should be the the step uh, the stride size? Or the step size should be step size should be. I mean, if we if it was just a comp, okay, convolution with the filter size of five by five, what would be the 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 step size that we need to obtain the same size of a spatial resolution? It should be one, right? It should be one. What about the padding size then? Padding size two, right? So it's exactly the same. So max pooling is, yeah. In terms of like uh, the number of an input that we need uh, when applying the the particular window at, at a particular position, and then in terms of the number of pixels that we need, and also the number of uh, output value that we produce. Okay. Between these two, the relationship will exactly be the same as the conf. Right, but the operation is operation is just a max. Yeah, 
max operation instead of just a linear combination. <웃음> 이거 야, 이해 가죠? 다 알고 있죠? 뭔가 아, 알면 좀 표정을 밝게 해주면 내가 좀 알아차리는데 좀 도움이 되지 않을까 싶어. 보컬 페이스라고 있으니 보컬 페이스라고 있으면 보컬 셔야죠. 네, okay, so in this case, uh, if we do the uh, max pooling. Uh, with the uh, overlapping windows as a stride size as one, and then what was the result? So, like, yeah, I think I have some examples uh, before, but one, two, five, three, and six, and eight, and maybe negative one and zero. So, in this case, uh, if we do the uh, max pooling over here, and then uh, it will produce five, right? And then uh, if we do this max pooling, and then it will produce eight, right? And then uh, among, yeah, when applying it to here, it will also produce 8. And then, like this, so if we have a uh, 2 and 1, and then it will also produce 8, and then also produce 8, right? So it's like duplicating or copying this 8 into like nearby pixels, right? So that was the effect of applying the max pooling with an overlapping window, right? Okay, so in this case, it is somewhat similar, I feel, because if you just think of like this as a max pooling output from some two by two, yeah, two by two activation map, and then uh, uh, somewhere uh, within this window, the max value would have been one and zero and negative one and uh, maybe negative two. And then uh, this will be picked as this guy, right? But if we just uh, recover this into two by two pixels, we don't know what are the other values, right? So in that case, uh, we just assume that uh, this uh, one was just one appeared, yeah, repetitively in all the each of the pixels in our windows, right? Okay, so that way it's like uh, duplicating or copying this uh, max value, I mean max value means that uh, means this output was com yeah was the um, was the output of uh, or result yeah resulting from the max pooling layer and then if we do the um, if we imagine the um, in inverse process inverse operation and then yeah it is just uh, copying this uh, max value into all the all the pixels within that window okay. So that was a simple idea of this unpooling, and also <coughs> there is a uh, max unpooling, which also was discussed in the next lecture when doing the guided backprop and and similar kind of things. So in this case, yeah. So we assume this kind of symmetry, okay, symmetry in terms of like this uh, inverse operation of the um, input and output activation map size, although they will uh, contain, they will involve the different sets of parameters. So if we did a uh, max pooling over here during our encoding phase, okay, and then along this uh, four by four uh, pixel values, one, two, four, three. And then uh, the, uh, if we assume we apply the two by two max pooling, and then four will be picked, uh, uh, chosen, right, at this particular layer, right. Suppose this one was like a two by two max pooling, okay. And then, uh, uh, in terms of the symmetry, we will do some unpooling at this, at this point or at this particular layer, that will increase the spatial resolution. Yeah, uh, into this, right. So in this case, yeah. We don't just uh, duplicate this four into like these two by two patches having the same values, but instead we actually uh, remember, yeah, we memorize where this uh, large value came from, like over here, and then yeah. So in this case, this max value is only yeah 
only placed in the corresponding position uh, where we uh, memorized as the, the source or the, the position that has the max value and then uh, for the other values we just simply put uh, zeros okay okay so this is another way of this uh, doing this uh, max on fully Okay, then now um, <clears throat> we discuss about this uh, transposed conv or sometimes called the uh, deconvolution. So, in the case of deconvolution, it can be viewed as the process of, yeah, I mean, inverse, yeah, inverse operation of this uh, conv, right? So, yeah, so in the case of conf, yeah, so given this uh, 3 by 3 pixels, uh, it can be viewed as producing a single value, right? So uh, we just apply the learnable uh, convolution layer uh, that corresponds to the convolution coefficient or linear combination coefficient that we apply in this particular, uh, particular region. And then uh, if we imagine this uh, inverse operation, given a single value we just generate yeah, maybe this uh, 3 by 3 set of value okay so you can view it as like a inverse uh, inverse transformation of this conf okay okay so <clears throat> before discussing why it is called a transposed conf but I mean uh, let's just uh, give a high level overview or uh, intuitive understanding of this transpose uh, this uh, deconvolution so <clears throat> so let's think of a b c d e f g h i so these are the pixel values, okay? So we denote those pixel values as this, and then uh, let's apply the the filter as one 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 and zero 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 zero, for example, okay? So this is one simple example of applying the conv, and then uh, when it was applied at this position, and then yeah, it will just produce. The linear combination of a, b, c, d, and e, f, and g, h, and i with the corresponding coefficient, right? And then, yeah, let's suppose its activation value was obtained as 10, okay? And then it means that at this particular uh, position, the strength of this pattern is corresponding to 10, right? And Suppose we apply the same filter, <coughs> maybe over here, and then uh, uh, it produced the um, uh, activation map, activation value as only three. So in this case, I mean intuitive meaning or under yeah intuitive like yeah meaning of it is that at this particular position in the green uh, window, it showed much strength, uh, much strong uh, signal or a strong pattern of this uh, uh, convolution filter that we defined, right? But at this uh, pink part, yeah, it only showed uh, the small strength of three, right? And then here, if we just uh, uh, think of the um, inverse process, yeah, inverse operation or transformation, uh, suppose I gave you only this uh, strength or this activation value, and then I want to, yeah, uh, you are asked to reconstruct these pixel values only based on this activation map and also this particular uh, uh, filter pattern okay so in this case <clears throat> it is uh, basically basically the problem uh, where we cannot obtain the unique solution because it's in this case yeah, a plus 
yeah, e plus i should be 10, right? In general, yeah, our uh, filter coefficient is 1 for these uh, a, e, and i, right? And then can we just infer or obtain the exact value from this single equation? I mean, exact value of a through i, for example, right? So we have a at least a three or yeah, nine different variables, but we only have a single equation, and so using a sing only a single equation, we cannot yeah uh, exactly define uh, each of our nine variables, right? So it's uh, basically impossible to solve the exact value based on this. I mean, for this uh, inverse transformation, right? So <clears throat> one approach uh, that we can simply yeah, we can simply take is as follows. So we know that yeah, we understand this value as like the strength of the, the the filter pattern, right? And then for this part, yeah, so let's just to simplify so that this part is not overlapping with the, this green part. Okay. So in this case, <clears throat> somewhere uh, we found the um, activation map uh, activation value as ten, and then for that corresponding part, we can just think of uh, this filter pattern uh, being found as the strength of 10. So for example, we can just reconstruct the original image as this, right, by just simply multiplying this uh, scalar value that corresponds to the, the strength of that filter pattern and also applying it element-wise with uh, our filter pattern. And somewhere over here, it only showed the um, activation value as 3. And then we just uh, uh, reconstruct this original image as having only the um, uh, 3 times uh, this filter pattern. Okay, So this is the main idea of deconvolution. Okay. So again, the main point is that yeah, we, yeah, it is impossible to yeah, determine our uh, individual variables at a pixel level as a unique value because it's an underdetermined system, right? So we basically have more number of variables than the number of an equations. And uh, so we just uh, take the simple way of just uh, reconstructing yeah, this kind of, a, yeah, by just uh, uh, doing the scalar multiple with the uh, our given filter pattern. So does it make sense? <clears throat> okay, then let me just uh, show some, yeah, uh, another example so that you, uh, I can help you understand a little bit better. So suppose this is our uh, activation map. And then our filter is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this is our filter. And then what will be our deconvolution output? So we have one here. And then, yeah, we just, so it is a really large number, but 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then now we have another activation map on the right by just moving one pixel to the right, right? And then uh, we just multiply it, right? And then here uh, we can also define our stride size or the step size. And so uh, if we just uh, assume the step size as one, step size as one, and then uh, we just multiply two by, yeah, with the, this uh, filter pattern, and then we overlap that with one pixel right, okay? And so, it's a 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and so on, right? And then, <clears throat> how can we handle these two yeah, overlapping uh, values? We just simply <coughs> take the addition of them, the summation of them, okay? So this is the the main idea of deconvolution. Okay, so <clears throat> let me ask uh, one question over here. 
So why do we need this uh, deconvolution? I mean, what's the goal or purpose of using this a little bit complicated or heuristically defined layer? It is because we want to increase the spatial resolution, right? So that was the main, main goal. So in this case, if we, so in this case of using the step size as one, okay, step size as one, will it increase the spatial resolution? Okay, so in this particular example, so we have two by two, and then what will be the spatial resolution of the um, output activation map? It is just four by four. Does it make sense? Because for each pixel, it is expanded into three by three, pi three by three patch, right? And then uh, if we uh, use the step, step size as one, right? And then three by three, and then it will be moved how many times? Yeah, with the number of uh, the pixels that we have in the um, input activation, right? So originally we have a 3 over here, and then we have a 2 pixel, right? And so we only have one additional row, right? And then <clears throat> if we have maybe n, uh, n by n, and then the filter size is maybe m by m, what would be the spatial resolution? So it is just an n, and then uh, yeah, we can exactly do the um, uh, inverse operation, yeah, inverse com yeah, computation of zero padding. So, so suppose it is three, and then given this uh, n original number of pixels, it will just increase one additional pixels on the left, right, and top and bottom, right? So it's like n plus m minus 1 over 2, I mean, yeah, this uh, equation is not that important, but uh, my point is, did it increase the spatial resolution? Although, yeah, it, it of course increased the spatial resolution, but it increased by the amount of this, right? So, <clears throat> if it was a uh, uh, maybe 1000 by 1000, then if it is a 3 by 3, then what would be the um, uh, resulting activation map size? It will be just 1002 and 1002, right? So it didn't increase the spatial resolution much, right? So we need some kind of ratio, right? The multiply, uh, integer type of a multiplier. So if we have a 10, uh, 1000 by 1000, and then we at least want to obtain this uh, 2000 by 2000, which has the ratio of like, yeah, uh, increasing. Uh, the spatial resolution by the ratio of 2, right? So <clears throat> how can we obtain or increase this uh, spatial resolution in this manner as this uh, multiplication? So that is true. Uh, that is by setting the step size as more than 1. Okay, so if we use the step size as for example 2, okay, and then for each pixel, yeah, when moving 1, yeah, we're moving uh, uh, yeah, one pixel to the right yeah, by the amount of a single pixel and then in the output the step size if the step size is 2 and then roughly roughly the image size becomes like yeah, 2 times larger than the original one right so typically in this uh, deconvolution this, <coughs> yeah, this uh, <coughs> step size is uh, set as yeah, more than 1 to increase the step, uh, to increase the spatial resolution. So, any questions so far? <웃음> 네. 합주님 부분요. 네. 네. 그러네요. 미안해요. 
또 이거 없어야 되네. 이 하여튼 가운데 거 빼고 나누기 둘 하면 이제 한쪽으로 삐져나가는 거잖아요. 근데 이제 한쪽으로 또 다른 쪽으로도 삐져나가니까. 그러네요. Any other questions? Okay, and then. 네. 이거요? 네. 또 여기서 보면 이게 <웃음> 러너블 업샘플링이라고 그러잖아요. 이게 결국은 <웃음> 이거 값 하나를 어떻게 그큰 패치로 할 것이냐. 그리고 이게 좀 이게 지금 오버랩이 되니까 이게 좀 약간 좀 이상해 보이긴 하는데 만약에 필터 사이즈가 3x3이고 아 저기 스텝 사이즈도 3이다라 그러면 오버랩이 전혀 없이 한 픽셀이 정확하게 3x3 픽셀이 되고 그 옆에 3x3 픽셀이 탁탁 되는 거예요. 그죠? 근데 저게 이제 트레이너블이라고 불리는 이유는 뭐 당연히 그 저기 그 앞에 있었던 그 언플링 같은 경우 맥스 언플링이나 뭐그 전에 그뭐그 뭐그 복사한 언플링 같은 경우 그런 식으로 한 픽셀을 그렇게 이제 2x2 혹은 3x3의 이제 그 패치로 이제 사이즈를 키워주긴 했지만 그 프로세스 혹은 그 과정 자체에서는 어떤 트레이너블한 파라미터도 없죠. 그죠? 네, 여기서는 이제 그 파라미터 요한 픽셀을 여기 이제 3x3 픽셀로 만들어주고는 싶은데 그 3x3의 픽셀로 어떤 값으로 만들어줄지 그거를 역시 학습을 또 하는 거죠. 이건 뭐, 네, 그냥 학습은 그냥 또 백프라베이 에서 또 되긴 돼. 왜냐면 이게 다 보면은 <웃음> 여기 값이 뭐냐? 이1 곱하기 5에 나오는 값이죠. 그래서 저 픽셀 값에 뭔가 그레이디언트가 도달을 했다. 그러면 그건 어찌됐건 이 5와 1의 곱셈으로 이루어지는 픽셀 값이니까 그러니까 그레이디언트가 각각 다 흐르는 거죠. 뭐 기본적인 이 선형 결합 혹은 이제 리니어 컴비네이션이라는 요소는 변하지 않았기 때문에. 애니 어더 퀘스천? 오케이, so <웃음> let's discuss why it is called a transposed conf. 오케이, okay. so we now understand this process as the um, inverse process of convolution, and that way we can kind of understand, uh, we can call it as deconvolution because d something is in yeah refer, referring to the um, inverse process of the original process. So, in order to understand that, uh, we need uh, some, yeah, some, yeah, some, yeah, something in uh, related to the linear algebra. And so, yeah, this is a simplified or simple example of a one D convolution. So, this is an activation map, and this is uh, our filter. And when applying the deconv, and then and also the step size as. So what's the step size over here? The step size is currently 2, right? Because a is multiplied with this vector, and then, yeah. And then for the second value, that is a 1 pixel, yeah, 1 pixel to the, to the bottom. And then we op, uh, apply, uh, multiply the uh, filter, and then in the um, output activation map, how many pixels uh, we uh, did we move? Only yeah, we moved uh, two pixels in this case, right? So roughly, it is like upsampling, uh, having the ratio of two, right? It increases the input activation map by the ratio of two. And for this uh, overlapping part, uh, we simply add them together. Okay, so let's see. So let me just uh, explain this. <coughs> okay, so. Uh, the left part is just a normal or a standard conv, and this conv uh, is sometimes uh, computed as the um, single matrix, single matrix vector multiplication. So, in this case, so there is a type over here. It should be Z. So in this case, let's assume uh, we apply. One dimensional conf, uh, given the um, activation map as A, B, C, D. So this is our acti input activation map. And then we want to apply the filter as X, Y, Z. And then we apply this filter. I mean, uh, here the padding size is uh, set as 1. So in that case, we apply this window for this part. 
right? And uh, moving one pixel uh, to the bottom, we apply the convolution over here and over here and over here, right? So that way, uh, computing this linear combination and then uh, uh, making it as a single one-dimensional vector, uh, this, this is our uh, output activation map through this one-dimensional convolution. Okay, and then, <clears throat> yeah, uh, if we were to implement this process, and then uh, we can, yeah, the simple way to implement this uh, would be to use a for loop, right? So we iterate through the entire position, I mean, each position in our input activation map, and then compute the linear combination at that corresponding patch or location, and then obtain activation map, right? But uh, uh, what if we just uh, uh, make it as a batch process? So in that case, it is basically a linear, yeah, yeah, so set of different linear combinations. So, so the first way is, so we have this activation map, input activation map, including uh, this zero, right? And then the first linear combination with this guy and this guy, okay? So that can be represented as the um, inner product with X, Y, Z, and here, right? And then what about the linear combination coefficient for this inner product corresponding to this input activation map? That will be simply set as zero, right? Okay, and then <clears throat> for this uh, second uh, window that we apply our convolution, then we set zero here, X, Y, Z here, and zero, zero, right? So basically we just uh, slide uh, this uh, filter that has the that has the same size of a vector as an input activation map, including the paddings, okay. And then simply in uh, in, in order to increase the filter size, so we just uh, simply uh, pad all zeros over here. And then uh, we uh, yeah we move this uh, pixel using this uh, sliding window kind of idea, right? Okay, so in this case. If we just uh, compute this a simple matrix and vector multiplication, and then we can just obtain, yeah, the activation map using this a single operation, right? So in practice, in practice, if we implement this guy as a for loop, okay, in the in the for loop case, uh, from yeah, when our GPUs are looking at this computation. Uh, they will not, yeah. They will not know how to compute, uh, how, how to parallelize this uh, for loop. Okay, but if you just uh, form this a uh, big matrix and then define this uh, whole process, whole process of uh, convolution as this a uh, single matrix vector multiplication, and then it's, uh, yeah. If we just uh, write our programming code in this form, and then uh, GPU will be able to parallelize this. Okay, so in that case, yeah, it will be just a much, yeah, it will be computed in parallel, which is uh, much faster than this uh, for loop version. Okay, okay, and then there could be another way of this uh, forming this uh, single matrix vector multiplication for this uh, exact same convolution computation. So, another way would be to this guy so here <clears throat> so we just uh, duplicated or copied our uh, filters as a different rows in our matrix on the left right so that way uh, we just uh, copied our uh, convolution filter coefficient but how about this So we have a convolution filter as x, y, z, right? And then we have an activation map as 0, a, b, c, d, and 0, right? In including the 0 padding, right? And then what will be the first, yeah, first row that forms the first activation map? It will be this guy, right? 0, a, b, right? And what about the second row? A, B, C, B, 
is cd cd zero right so in that case this result will be exactly be the same as the output uh, the convolution output okay so in general <coughs> yeah this kind of method is called m2 m2 call because we just uh, change it or convert our image input image into the column vector so in this particular case uh, it is just a row vector but yeah if we just do the um, uh, transpose version and then uh, we have an xyz and yeah and 0 ab and abc bcd cd zero right so that way <coughs> Out of our image of this uh, ABCD or including the padding 0, ABCD, and 0, then we just uh, yeah, simply cut those uh, window region or sub part and uh, made our columns to form this entire matrix to be multiplied with our filter coefficient as a single vector. Okay, so that is called the M2 call method. So <coughs> Yeah I, yeah, I believe, uh, yeah, so in modern uh, deep learning uh, libraries, if you run the um, convolution, and then it is internally converting this uh, image into this form, and then just uh, yeah, implement this convolution operation as just a single uh, matrix vector multiplication, okay? Instead of just running or iterating through this uh, uh, for loops, okay? Because that way we can utilize the yeah GPU parallelism parallelism or acceleration. So in this case <coughs> what's the uh, this was the disadvantage of this method yeah compared to the um, for loop case so what's the cost So in this case, the yeah we can parallelize this computation, but uh, here uh, the price that we uh, need to pay for is additional memory. So in this case, uh, what was the input activation map? I mean the size of an input activation, including the zero padding. We only needed a six number, right? And then uh, if we just do the unfold loop and then compute the inner product, inner product or yeah convolution on the um, corresponding uh, positions and then uh, we don't need yeah we don't need any additional uh, kind of redundancies in terms of storing these numbers but once we form this into this matrix then out of six number we need three times four which is a uh, 12 numbers right and simply this uh, a was duplicated and uh, yeah, those were all duplicated in this manner right so the single values are duplicated into our memory and so we require uh, more num yeah more uh, size of our memory so that is the main yeah drawback of using this uh, into call but uh, speed or yeah, yeah computation yeah is done much faster and also <coughs> this is the same yeah this is yeah this has the same drawback so in this case, what was what were duplicated? So the duplicated part was not the input image pixels, but the um, filter coefficient, right? So filter coefficient of x, y, z were duplicated. Yeah, were copied uh, multiple times. So that way, uh, we yeah we need more uh, yeah more number of memory. Okay, so. Any questions about it? Okay, and then, yeah. Yeah. 그러니까 이렇게 하면 이걸 for for loop으로 하면 주어진 이제 a b c d 그러니까 0까지 포함한 거 그거 만들어 놓고 이제 x y z라는 이제 필터 코이피션트 받아서 이제 이걸 이제 컨버션 uh, 한다는 거는 이렇게 윈도우를 이렇게 쭉 돌아가면서 이제 하는 거잖아요. 여기서 액티베이션 매크하고 또 이렇게 하고 이거를 이제 
저 하나의 그냥 어레이 원디메뉴 어레이에다가 그냥 그 해당 위치 있는 거를 네. 그 리니어 커뮤니션 혹은 내적을 계산하면 되는 거죠. 네, 저렇게 하면 사실 뭐 저렇게 하, 하는 게 사실 일반적일 수 있어요. 근데 이제 중요한 건 이제 좀 트릭을 쓰면 이런 식으로 이제 한 방에 이제 어떤 매트릭스와 벡터의 멀티플리케이션으로 나타낼 수가 있다는 거고 이렇게 나타내면 뭐가 좋냐 하면 이렇게 나타내면 뭐가 좋냐 하면 이 매트릭스 멀티플리케이션에서 기본적으로 일어나게 되는 거는 여러 번의 내적이에요. 왜 그러냐면 여기서 이거랑 이거랑 내적되고 또 이거랑 이거 내적되고 이네 번의 서로 다른 내적이잖아요. 그러면 이제 GPU는 이제 왜 GPU가 딥러닝을 이제 빠르게 계산하느냐 하여튼 뭔가 매트릭스와 벡터 혹은 매트릭스와 매트릭스도 상관없는데 그런 게 그런 매트릭스 간의 곱 혹은 매트릭스와 벡터 간의 곱이 딱 들어왔다. 그럼 걔를 하여튼 이런 식으로 지금 여기서 이제 이렇게 한 줄로 쓰여진 뭐 Matt m o r i n 뭐 이런 거 쓰면 되는 뭐 이런 한 줄로 계산되어진 거를 내부적으로 싹다 패럴렐라이즈를 해요. 지금 무슨 소리냐면 이 GPU가 갖고 있는 수백 수천 개의 코어에다가 이제 이런 것들을 쫙 이제 네개 서로 다른 코어들에다 딱 할당을 해갖고 이제 그네 번에 이제 계산을 시퀀셜하게 하면 뭐 시간이 네배 걸릴 걸 이거 시간을 4분의 1로 줄이는 거죠. 네, 그래서 이렇게 만드는 게왜 좋냐? 뭐 똑같은 계산은 왜 이렇게 뭐 쓸데없이 매치스랑 벡터의 곱으로 나타내느냐? 저렇게 해서 코드를 맵머리든 뭐 이런 이런 식으로 짜두면 그러면 이제 GPU가 저거를 싹다 패럴렐라이즈를 해준다는 거죠. 네, 근데 사실 뭐이 포룹을 이 포룹을 패럴렐라이즈를 할 수도 있어요. 뭐 코드상으로도 이제 뭐 패럴렐 포월룩 같은 거 지원하는 또 이제 패럴렐 그 프로그래밍 라이브러리들이 있기는 있어요. 그래서 저게 이제 패럴렐라이즈가 가능하니까 이제 그걸 내가 이제 일일이 다 패럴렐라이즈를 하자. 근데 그렇게 되면은 좀 고라파지고 이제 왜냐면 이게 우리가 항상 그뭐 통신도 그렇지만 이제 OSI 세븐 레이어 뭐 이런 거 있잖아요. 이게 뭔가 이제 아래쪽에서 하는 일을 약간 왼손이 하는, 하는 일을 오른손이 모르게 하라 뭐 이런 거 있잖아요. 그러니까 아래쪽에서 뭐가 일어나는지 이제 내가 모른 채 이제 위쪽에서 내가 그걸 abstraction 해갖고 나는 그 위쪽에서의 뭔가 operation만 집중을 하면 네. 아래쪽에서 어떤 이게 이럴 때는 저게 아래쪽에서 일어나 이런 거 신경 쓰기 시작하면 내가 내가 할수 있는 고차원적인 뭔가 일을 못 한단 말이죠. 뭐 하여튼 그래서 이제 그런 이제 abstraction이 이렇게 쭉 진행이 되잖아요. 역시 이것도 마찬가지예요. 그러니까 야, 이것도 이제 뭐, 그렇, 이 특정한 케이스에 대해서는 패럴렐라이즈를 그 아랫단에서 이제 GPU까지 내려가서 이제 할 수도 있겠지만, 이제 그, 그것까지 신경 쓰자면 이제 뭐, 사실 어떻게 보면 좀 너무 한두 끝도 없고, 이제 GPU가 아랫단에서 그 쿠다라고 이루어지는 뭐, C-like 한, 그러니까 C와 비슷한 형태의 이제 그 GPU 프로그래밍 라이브러리가 있고, 거기서 이제 굉장히 이제 그런 매트릭스 멀티플리케이션 맨멀 펑션이 딱 들어왔다. 그럼 그거는 내부적으로 싹다 패럴렐라이즈 하도록 이렇게 펑션이 다 이렇게 라이브러리 화, 라이브러리가 잘 되어 있고, 우리는 이제 이 윗단에서만 노는 거예요. 그러면 이제 저 매트릭스 멀티플리케이션으로 만들어 주면 저게 이제 내부적으로는 이제 자동으로 이제 패럴렐라이즈가 되니까 이제 그런 이점을 우리가 살릴 수가 있다는 거죠. 근데 그렇게 하려면 기본적으로 이런 지금 얘기했던 매트릭스 어, 매트릭스 혹은 매트릭스 벡터 멀티플리케이션을 만들어 줘야 되고 그렇게 만들려면 이 매트릭스를 실제로 만드는 과정에서 이제 메모리에 이제 중복이 이제 끼어든다는 거죠. 네. 또 다른 질문 있나요? 오케이, okay, so <웃음> now uh, let me describe why the deconvolution is uh, is called uh, called a transposed conf. Case okay, so from this perspective, let's see. <웃음> okay, so you guys understand this uh, this process as the deconvolution, right? And then here, the activation map can be viewed as this guy, um, <coughs> x, y, z, and 0, 0. I mean, I'm just rewriting this computation in this form. x, y, z, and 0, 0, and 0, 0, and x, y, z, right? OK, and. So it is multiplied with the scalar A and scalar B, right? So it is like, so we just uh, multiply A with uh, this uh, each of our filter element values, 
and then we put it into the corresponding position, right? And then for the second value of an input activation map, input activation value, and then uh, apply the scalar multiple, and then uh, we put it in the corresponding position, right? And then if we consider the entire size of an output activation map, and then uh, we just simply, yeah, add this uh, zero padding so that this entire vector is now corresponding to the um, output activation map, okay? And then uh, XYZ and XYZ, those uh, different positions are filled by our filter coefficient. And then uh, we multiply it with this uh, scalar multiple that came from our uh, act yeah, input activation value, right? Okay, so in this case, <coughs> now it can be viewed as this guy. You guys know that it is a linear combination of these two columns with the coefficient as a and b. And then uh, we can now utilize this as okay. So I'll, I'll use this a and b and x y z zero 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 x y z. Okay, <clears throat> so we can factor this representation into this uh, matrix and vector multiplication, right? And so it is simply just a linear combination of these two columns on the left, right? And so now uh, it can be viewed as like this kind of M2 core kind of thing, right? Just like this. So on the left, uh, on the right, we have our ac input activation map, right? And then on the right, we now have like a padded version or this in, in, yeah, expanded or enlarged version of our filter coefficient, right? By filling or padding all the zeros in the irrelevant part, right? Okay, so, <clears throat> so that way it can, yeah, it can be viewed almost similar to this kind of process, right? So what's the difference between this and this part? So in this case, because we needed the um, inner product. So these are input activation map, and then uh, we needed uh, to mod, yeah, to the um, to do the linear combination with our filter coefficient, right? And then produce a single output. Okay, the single output. So in this case. <coughs> This kind of yeah convolution can be viewed as this uh, row vector times column vector to produce single scalar value, but in the case of deconvolution, we now think of it as the scalar multiple of this guy with this uh, column vector that is uh, yeah defined as our filter coefficient. Okay. So that way, if we compare this guy and this guy, so now this is our normal or original conf, but in the case of deconf, if this was our uh, filter coefficient, and then we, yeah, rather than placing it as a row vector, we place it as a column vector, so that we can perform the scalar multiple with the input activation, input activation value. So that way, roughly this guy is if this guy is transposed and then our uh, convolution filter is now a column vector, right? Column vector rather than a row vector. So that's why we call it as transposed conf because we just transpose this part from our normal conv operation to obtain this uh, deconf operation. <coughs> Any questions? Okay, so this was a 1D case. 
But uh, if we extend it, uh, what if we use the 2D conf or 2D deconf? Okay, so in that case, I mean, the entire yeah, the overall process is almost the same. So in the case of 2D conf, like. So we have this uh, input activation map, for example, like this. And then suppose our filter size is only uh, having a two by two, right? So in this case, we just uh, rearrange or reshape this uh, 2D activation map into this form. So we have one vector, and then uh, another vector, and then uh, concatenate it into, yeah into the bottom part so that we obtain uh, this uh, long and thin uh, column vector. So that can be viewed as a single uh, <coughs> a single input activation map uh, uh, represented as a single vector. Okay, and then uh, <coughs> suppose we have one, two, three, four as our uh, filter coefficient. Okay, and then uh, what will be the first conv uh, output or first activation map output and then so we have uh, it's a too too large so so let's consider like one two three four five six seven one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then uh, if we form it as a single single column vector, then this one will be our column vector, and then 10, 11, 12, and 4, 13, and then uh, what will be the corresponding uh, row vector to form our matrix on the left? It will be 10, 11, because these two will be multiplied with these guys, right? No, uh, it should be 12 over here, right? Because of 1 times 10 and 2 times 12, right? So here we have a 12, and uh, what's the corresponding coefficient for this uh, 3 input activation value? And then it should be 0, right? And then 4 is uh, matching with the 11, right? 11 and 13 and all the zeros. Right? You get the idea? So this is how we can rearrange the 2D conf as just a single matrix vector multiplication. And then using the same idea, we can implement uh, the deconf operation. Any questions so far? <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> then uh, yeah, next uh, I want to discuss about yeah, something called the checkerboard effect of this uh, deconvolution. So in this particular case, as you can see, uh, we see some kind of an overlap uh, between these two kind of scalar multiple of our filters, right? So if our step size is uh, strictly less than the filter size, and then we inevitably have the um, overlapping part, right? And then in general, in this case, this pixel value, and also if we uh, imagine doing a uh, one additional uh, activation map, so if we have an additional input activation value, and then the the third vector will be placed over here, right? And so these parts. Uh, the pixel values and the um, output activation map uh, will be the sum of these two parts, but in this case, they will be just a uh, single output of the single activation map. Okay, so <coughs> so this is uh, known as this uh, checkerboard artifact. So. So this is a deconf uh, having the filter size as three by three, and the step size as two. Okay. So in this case, roughly the image size will be expanded or enlarged by the ratio of two, right? And then 
now in this part yeah you can see that this uh, darker part is the um, overlapping region where uh, those two uh, two outputs from this uh, the decomp operation from two different uh, locations uh, is some yeah, is added together right and sometimes <clears throat> in this part yeah so those uh, even dark darker part uh, will be formed as the sum of the um, four different values, right? So in that case, in general, if we just assume our filter coefficient of like this uh, three by three filters as a kind of random variable, uh, having the same mean and the variance, for example, and then those darker parts will have larger variance, right? Because it will be the sum of more number of random variables. Right, so that way <clears throat> we sometimes see this kind of checkerboard pattern in our deconv yeah deconv output, like yeah this kind of yeah some regular yeah it is a little bit hard to see but yeah Let's see Okay, so in this case, you can roughly see uh, this kind of checkerboard pattern where, yeah, this uh, with the same interval, we see a little bit, yeah, relatively darker pixels than the other pixels. Okay. Okay, so there are several techniques uh, that can, yeah, yeah, they can kind of avoid, yeah, they can prevent this kind of, yeah, uh, undesirable effect. Okay, but uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, understand this as a general kind of uh, drawback or yeah, disadvantage of using deconvolution in order to increase this, the spatial resolution in our decoder part. <coughs> Any questions? <coughs> okay. <coughs> So I'd like to uh, briefly discuss this uh, fully convolutional network. Fully convolutional network. Did I explain this fully convolutional network? Okay. So yeah, in short, it is of course called the um, FCN, fully convolutional network. But yeah, it is not actually fully connected network. It's actually fully convolutional network. So in this case, <coughs> the main idea uh, is uh, quite interesting. So you now change all the all the operation. I mean, yeah, the basically the main trick is to change the fully connected layer into the convolution operation. Okay. So in this case of a VGG network or this uh, in, uh, Google Net, let's see. So at some point in our VG network or uh, in general any other uh, yeah, image classification networks like uh, ResNets and DenseNets and so on. So starting from some point, we now uh, change the phase into the fully connected layer instead of uh, convolution layer, right? So in this part, we obtained this kind of uh, outer acti activation map and then we just reshape it into a long column vector and then start with our uh, fully connected layer right and then uh, the yeah so over here starting from here uh, the first fully connected layer will have the output node uh, output dimension as 4096 right so in this particular case let me just uh, ask one question oh. okay so yeah, typically when performing this image classification, the input image size should be fixed as that, right? 224 and 224 by 3. But what if we just 
yeah, what if we uh, feed a larger size of an image? Sometimes uh, some images are, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, some images are taken as a photo with the low resolution, but some other photos uh, will have a higher resolution, right? So in this case, uh, our image size is, for example, 300 by 300 by 3. Okay, so it's just one example of a larger size of an image. So in this case, uh, you just uh, assume just uh, feed for it or uh, just feed it to our uh, VGG network. And then when exactly will our error occur? Okay, so during this all, during this all, all these uh, convolution and the pooling layer, will it, uh, yeah, will it, yeah, yeah, will it make any error message over here? It will not, right? Because given the um, larger activation map size, okay, and then uh, we will just do the um, combo operation, and then the output activation map could be just uh, could be could be larger than usual, corresponding, right? Again, if we have a larger input image size or larger input activation map size, and then the combo operation has no problem of obtaining or producing the corresponding output activation map. Right, <clears throat> but when is it? Yeah, when we when is uh, this error happening exactly? That is when we just turn to this uh, uh, turn to this uh, fully connected layer, because this fully connected layer in the middle uh, uh, between here, it will uh, take the um, exact same number of an output as this guy as number of an input node as this this value. <clears throat> But in this case, okay, give me one second. It doesn't work. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> at this point, because uh, we fe we fed a larger input image size from the beginning over here, and then suppose we obtained larger activation map size at this point. So for example, our uh, in uh, input activation map is this guy. 10 by 10 by 512, but in this uh, fully connected layer is assuming that the um, exact same number of an input nodes, same as this guy, right? So we cannot fit this guy into this uh, fully connected layer, right? So that's an, that's an obvious phenomenon, right? But <clears throat> in order to handle this situation, yeah, motivated by this, we can actually change all the fully connected layer as a kind of a special case of a conf. Okay, special case of a conf. So how do we do? Yeah, how do we do that? So in this case, okay. So suppose we have this an um, activation map, and then now we turn to the fully connected layer, and then it will be just reshaped into this a single vector having a four dimensional vector and then now we have yeah, suppose we have a two dimensional output in this fully connected layer and then <clears throat> okay so for this y1 and y2 and then suppose y1 is yeah this x x1 x2 x3 x4 and y1 is represented as x1, 2x2, 3x3, and 4x4. Yeah, suppose that is our fully connected layer like parameters that we learned. Okay, so in this case, <clears throat> so this guy is like 5x1, 6x2, 7x3, plus 8x4. So in this case, how about just changing it into conv so that we have the first convolution layer as like one, two, three, four. Okay. So here, our filter size is uh, exactly the same as input activation map. Okay. And then, since our uh, filter size is uh, the same as an input activation map, there is no kind of a room for moving around, right? So in this case, it will just produce a single output activation map, right? And that will correspond to this value. And then now uh, the second filter output is five, six, seven, eight. And then applying this filter into this, and then we obtain the single, yeah, <coughs> single output activation map. And then we concatenate that, and then we obtain it. Okay. <coughs> okay.
Okay, so in this case, the fully connected layer can be viewed as this a special case of this convolution, convolution layer where the filter size, I mean each of our filter is exactly the same, uh, same size as the input activation map and how many number of uh, filters do we have? How many filters do we have? Filter size will be exactly the same as the output node in the original fully connected layer, right? Because one convolution filter will produce one single output, right? Because that is exactly fitting, yeah, matching with the input image, right? With the no no room for moving around. Okay, so that way <clears throat> we can just change every convolution layer over here as a single. I mean, yeah, as a convolutional. Layer. I mean every fully connected layer into convolution layer. So in this case, <coughs> so if we had uh, this uh, uh, this activation map as an input uh, input, then what would be what would be the difference in this case? Okay. So now, yeah, we have larger input activation map. Okay, unlike the uh, typical situation. So. We just uh, gave the um, strange or yeah larger kind of yeah relatively large input image, and then at this particular point, and then uh, we will have this uh, large input activation map at that particular layer. Okay, so in this case, if we were to have this uh, normal input activation map size, and then it will produce a single output, but now. It is defined as a conf like this, and then given this larger activation map size, then we now have a room for moving around our filters like this. Okay, so applying one single convolution filter will now produce like four different outputs instead of a single output. Okay, so now. <coughs> Yeah, for the second filter, and then we will obtain another activation map size that has no longer the, the spatial resolution as one by one, uh, which is a kind of a larger size than this uh, one, yeah, one by one spatial resolution. Okay. Okay. And then now uh, let's just imagine we arrived at this node. Okay, at this final node. So in that final node, then uh, typically we will obtain the spatial resolution as one by one, and then the dimension would be a uh, thousand, uh, where each of each of them is corresponding to our, our particular uh, class or category in this uh, object classification, right? And then, uh, yeah, given this uh, a thousand dimensional vector, using it as a logit value, and then uh, we apply it. <coughs> We apply it to the um, softmax layer to obtain the single uh, distribution across or over this uh, thousand uh, different uh, class categories, right? But now, uh, if we just uh, have a larger spatial re uh, size, a larger spatial resolution like this, okay, and then yeah, instead of using a single uh, one by one uh, spatial resolution, we now have like four by four and thousand uh, as our channel size or depths okay so in this case <clears throat> how can we apply the softmax over here so we need to give a single uh, high dimensional vector as an input to the um, softmax layer but here how can we uh, apply the softmax over here and then the softmax is applied at every different location of thousand dimensional vector. Okay, and then uh, this uh, intuitively the meaning of this uh, thousand dimensional vector at a different position is uh, indicating the logit value of yeah of the um, likelihood of a particular category at that particular position. Okay, so if we have a single 224 by 220 images image and then uh, at the fully connected layer and uh, all the way at the end of this uh, softmax layer and then we obtain the one by one spatial resolution and then thousand 
dimensional vector. So that will summarize or that will describe the entire image level uh, class distribution or probability distribution across different categories. But in this particular case, because we gave a larger size of an input image, and then the output, the final output will have some, yeah, more uh, uh, more size of the um, activation map. I mean that having that has the the spatial res uh, resolution more than one by one, and then still at each position we have a thousand dimensional vector, and that vector is describing the probability of a particular I mean of different classes at that particular position and over here. Okay, so in this case. <coughs> It's like given this uh, 300 by 300 images, and then uh, uh, once we obtain this a uh, 2 by 2, and then it's roughly saying that, okay, this part is likely to be like dog, but this part is likely to be like yeah, some other, maybe cat and so on. And then uh, uh, how can we obtain, yeah, but still in this case, we want to obtain the um, single kind of image level or class prediction. So we want to be able to say that okay, this image is like is uh, predicted as a cat, right? Yeah, rather than like uh, specifying different categories or different classes per different locations, right? So in this case, we typically have we typically have <coughs> global average pooling at this uh, logit value. So in this case, we have the um, global average pooling. To obtain a one by one by thousand, uh, for example, logic value. Okay. So this is how we can kind of change this uh, fully connected layer into like fully convolutional layer, because we we no longer have any other layers. Like uh, yeah, we don't have any fully connected layer, but all the layers were replaced by the fully convolutional, I mean convolutional layer, although we have the uh, max pooling and so on, but at least we don't have any uh, fully connected layer, and thus once we change that, and then even if we gave the larger size of an input image, and then it will have, yeah, it will, yeah, it will have no errors when running this code. Any questions? Okay, so the time's up. So, yeah. Okay, then uh, let's continue to discuss on the remaining chapter and the next chapter, and also some other topics in the yeah in the, yeah this Wednesday. Okay, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Okay. 
그렇죠? 네. 그러면은 그 다음엔 이제 이걸 한 줄을 핀후 이게 폴리 커넥티드 레이어를 통해서 이제 어떤 특정한 아웃풋 노드로 이렇게 변환이 돼요. 죄송한데 지금 이 얘기가 지금 디컴브루션 네. 얘기가 아니라 아 디컴브루션 얘기 아니에요. 네네네. 네. 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 이거는 디컴브루션 아무 상관 없어요. 네네네. 아 네네. 네. 네. 그래서 그러니까 VGNet에서 그 VGNet 뿐만 아니라 뭐 레지넷도 그렇고 다 이렇게 어느 시점엔가는 이제 풀리 커넥티드 레이어로 전환이 되는 시점이 있어요. 네. 근데 그 풀리 커넥티드 레이어로 전환이 될때그 풀리 커넥티드 레이어를 그거 자체를 그냥 컴브로 정의를 할 수가 있다는 거고 네. 여전히 컴브로 정의를 할 수가 있다는 거고 컴브에서 좀 바보 같긴 하지만 이 필터가 옹, 돌아다닐 수 없는 여기서 그냥 이 인풋 액티비션 맵 사이즈랑 그냥 정확하게 동일한 컴브 필터를 정의를 하는 거예요. 그리고 이렇게 걸면 움직이지 못하고 이제 그래서 액티베이션 맵 하나만 이제 뽑아주겠죠. 그리고 필터가 여러 개 있다, 거기 두개 있다 그러면 딱두 개의 액티베이션 맵을 만들어 줄 거고요. 네. 하나 하나가 스칼라, 네, 스칼라. 네. 네. 네, 그렇게 하면 되는데 네. 이게 이제 아까 얘기했던 것처럼 저 인풋 단에서 이제 이미지가 더큰게 이제 입력으로 들어오면, 네. 그러면 이 풀리 그 컨볼루션까지는 잘 통과하는 데는 아무 문제가 없어요. 네. 그죠? 아웃풋이 잘 나오는데 다만 액티베이션 맵이 사이즈가 다른 거죠. 그래서 이 시점에 도달했으면 네. 이게 이제 2x2 사이즈로 도달했으면 이게 이렇게 쫙 펴갖고 네. 어, 4개짜리의 입력 노드를 받는 풀리 커넥티드 레이어가 이제 구동이 되는데 네. 네. 만약에 우리가 여기서 액티베이션 맵 사이즈가 더 컸어요 네. 그래서 한 줄로 폈더니 이게 더 벡터가 길어진 거예요 아, 네. 네. 그럼 이 경우는 풀리 커넥티드 레이어를 통과를 못 시키겠죠 왜냐하면 인풋 노드가 안 맞으니까 아, 네. 그렇죠? 네. 네. 네 그러니까 그게 안 맞으니까 그게 에러가 나요 네. 네. 근데 아까 그 풀리 커넥티드 레이어 아까는 전혀 이렇게 그 실질적인 효과라 그래야 될까 다 차이점을 전혀 만들어내지 않은 그런 좀 약간 좀왜 그렇게 했나 싶을 정도로 바보 같은 좀 그런 방식인 것 같아 보였던 그러니까 그냥 풀리 커넥티드 레이어를 그냥 동등한 계산을 해주는 컴블 레이어로 바꿔두면 그러면 이제 이거는 컴블을 할 수가 있는 거죠. 네네. 그렇죠? 이제 여기서 이런 필터 코이피션트가 정의가 됐을 때는 이게 사이즈가 더큰게 이렇게 들어왔다라고 하면. 네. 저 3x3이 들어왔다 그러면 여기에 이제 원래는 이게 2x2 이게 이 인풋 이미지랑 사이즈가 똑같아갖고 여기 딱한 번만 걸려서 아웃풋 하나만 해야 되는데 여기는 이제 얘가 이제 돌아갈 수 있는 이렇게 돌아다닐 수 있는 그 공간 여유가 생긴 거잖아요. 네. 그러니까 여기서 이제 아웃풋 하나가 나오는 게 아니라 그 아웃풋 하나가 이제 이렇게 여기서는 뭐 예를 들면 이렇게 네 개가 나온다는 거고. 네. 그죠? 네. 그러면 요네 개가 이제 두 장짜리가 이렇게 요렇게 뭔가 네. 어디 어디 있더라? 두 장짜리가 나온다는 거예요. 네. 한 장, 또한 장. 예, 한 장. 여기 여기 또 그래요. 네, 그러니까 여기서는 어, 움짝달싹 돌아다닐 수 없었으니까 액티베이션 밸류가 하나만 나와요. 필터 하나당. 네. 근데 여기서는 컨볼루션이 이제 나오 이제 그 저기 큰게 들어왔으니까 아, 네네. 아, 네네. 돌아다닐 수가 있되 최소한 네. 여기서는 에러가 안 나는 거예요. 네네. 그러니까 더큰 그러니까 내가 2 4 바이 2 4짜리의 이미지를 가지고 학습한 거를 네. 그 네트워크에다가 원래는 항상 우리가 좀 사진이 이제 고해상도 이미지다? 그러면 그걸 무조건 2, 4와 2, 4를 일단 아, 리사이즈를 해갖고 집어넣어야 되는데 아, 이걸 그냥 집어넣을 아, 수 있다는 뜻이 아, 되는 거죠. 네네. 그러면 이제 그걸 가지고 네네. 그러면 최종적으로는 어떻게 되느냐 마지막에는 이제 원 바이 원의 이제 그 천디벤전 그리고 그게 로지스로 사용이 돼갖고 이제 소프트맥스를 네. 거쳐서 네. 이제 그 이미지 자체가 이제 이천개의 클래스 중에 이제 어느 클래스에 가장 많이 속하는지를 나타내는 그 디스튜비션 벡터를 얻어내요. 그죠? 네, 네. 근데 여기서는 이제 최종 마지막 끝까지 가서도 네, 네. 끝까지 가서도 그 이미지 하나 에 대한 어떤 천 디멘전의 벡터가 나오는 게 아니라 네네. 이런 어떤 리전별로 이 리전별로 네네. 천 디멘전의 벡터가 나온다는 거죠. 아, 네네. 그럼 이걸 가지고 우리는 우리가 하고 싶은 역시 목적은 더큰 고해상도 이미지가 들어왔는데도 이거를 이제 이 이미지는 강아지다, 고양이다. 이거를 이 중에 하나를 얘기해 해주고 싶은 거예요. 네. 근데 이제 이 이제 투 바이 투로 이렇게 나온 요 어떤 아, 최종적인 이, 아, 이 액티베이션 맨. 그러니까 가장 마지막 아웃풋에서도 이렇게 조차 나왔다라고 하는 거는 네. 이거 어떻게 해석을 할 수가 있냐면 이게 각각의 천디멘전의 음. 파이버 혹은 이 벡터들이 그 각각의 리전마다 그러니까 이 이미지상에서 왼쪽 위에 있었던 이 부분이 이제 뭐 예를 들면 뭐 고양이가 좀큰 값으로 나타났다 이게 소프트맥스 그 소프트맥스를 얘 따로 얘 따로 이렇게 네개 위치에 대해서 다 따로 따로 해주는 거예요. 그러면 이제 얘에 대해서는 이제 이 부분에 뭐 고양이가 제일 세게 나왔다거나 이 부분에는 뭐 강아지가 제일 세게 나왔다고 이런 식으로 이제 네. 되는 거예요. 네. 그러니까 이게 어떻게 보면 지역별로 이렇게 그저 클래스피케이션 한 거라고 볼 수도 있고요. 네. 근데 이제 이거 근데 이미지 레벨에서 우리가 클래스피케이션 아웃풋을 얻고 싶잖아요. 네. 이 이미지가 최종적으로는 강아지다, 뭐다 이런 하나의 그 디스튜비션 벡터를 얻고 싶은 거잖아요. 소프트맥스 벡터를. 네. 그러니까 그걸 하기 위해서는 어떻게 하느냐? 이 로지 값까지의 2 단계에서 
나온 값을 그러니까 이거를 어디에서 글로벌 에버리지 풀링을 할지는 뭐좀 네, 그게 이제 좀 그건 디자인 초이스인데 로직 값에 해당하는 요거에다가 글로벌 에버리지 풀링을 한다 그러면 요네개 중에 네 개를 그냥 평균을 내는 거예요. 네. 그러면 이거를 이제 원 바이 원 바이 이제 다우전드 벡터로 만들 수가 있는 거. 아 그러면 천천 개를 각각 그냥. 네, 이천 디멘전을 네 아, 개를 그냥 그냥 평균을 아, 내는 거예요. 아 네네. 네. 각윗 네, 디멘전별로. 네네. 네. 그러면 이제 이미지를 어떻게 어떻게 보면 이미지를 설명하는 여전히 이제 그 역시 이제 스페셜 레졸루션은 결국 원 바이 원 짜리의 천 디멘전 벡터 얻을 수가 있는 거잖아요. 아 네. 네. 이거를 가지고 이제 저기 소프트맥스를 해주면 이제 거기서 이제. 아 네. 그러니까 마지막엔 그 글로벌 에브리지 풀링에 해당하는 네. 그 프로세스가 네. 여기 네. 하나 있어요. 그렇지만 이제 포인트는 뭐냐면 여기서 이제 아까 얘기했던 것처럼. 그 이제 인풋 액티베이션 네, 메시지가 그게, 네, 그게 네. 서로 다 그러니까 다른 거를 줘도 이게 좀 유연하게 동작을 할 수가 있다. 아 네네네. 네. 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 지금 저희가 네. 프로젝트로 네. 그 그러니까 웹툰을 만드는 그러니까 웹툰 한한 컷을 만드는 웹툰이요? 네. 아 마, 마, 네. 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 그런 걸 하고 있는데. 네. 웹툰 생성을 한다고요? 네. 네. 그, 그러니까 전체가 아니라 그냥 한 컷이 한 컷? 그걸 하려고 하는 거예요. 목표예요. 한 컷. 네. 근데 그게 교수님 생각하시기에 뭐 어떤 모델이 스택칸이 제일 스택칸? 네. 네. 그, 스택칸은 텍스트에서 이미지 네. 생성하는 거잖아요. 네. 그러니까, 그, 그러니까 원래 목표는 약간 만화가가 네. 좀 쉽게 <웃음> 자기 웹툰을 그릴 수 있게 네. 왜냐면 되게 복잡한 그림 같은 경우에는 만화가도 되게 힘들어하니까 그러니까 어떤 단순한 그런 좀 복잡한 그림 같은 경우에는 그냥 그걸 글로 써가지고 네. 그걸 막한 장면을 만드는 그런 걸 생각하고 있었는데 네. 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 기본적으로 이제 텍스트 투 텍스트 투 이미지 제네레이션을 하겠다. 네, 네, 네. 학습 데이터 하는 거라고 대사를 따, 딸 거예요. 근데 그, 그것도 <웃음> 저희가 근데 생각하기로는 대사 대사는 그냥 대사는 없이 네 없이 네 대사는 날리고 말풍선은 유지하되 대사는 날리는 걸 생각을 하고 있었는 게 빨리 네 그러니까 그 인풋 아웃풋이 지금 <웃음> 학습을 할때 필요하잖아요 학습 데이터 그 페어드 된게 네. 그러니까 그 페어드 데이터를 어떤 식으로 확보를 할 생각이에요? <웃음> 일단 그러니까 그 그런 만화 데이터셋도 있긴 있어요. 이, 이, 그러니까 네. 네. <웃음> 이게 무슨 문제가 문제가 많은데요. 그 저희가 데이터 때문에 문제가 있는 건데. 네, 그게 어떻게 보면 제일 중요한 문제. 네, 네. 그래서 그 제일 중요한 문제가 해결이 안 돼서 네. 여쭤보려고 그런 건데. 그 네. 웹툰 네이버 웹툰 사용을 할까 했어요. 네이버 웹툰이 좀 이미지가 두세 컷이 붙어 있어서 그걸 그냥 잘라서만 사용을 하, 자르고 말풍선 날리고 사용을 할까 했는데. 네. 이 문자가 크롤링을 많이 하면은 네이버가 배너 시킨다고 네. 네. 그래서 혹시 그거에 대한 대책 같은 게 혹시 많이 해보셨으니까 있을 수도 있을 것 같아가지고 <웃음> 혹시 네. 있으신가요? 필요하면 이제 웹툰 자체 데이터는 네. 내가 뭔가 이미 크롤링 한 것들이나 우리 쪽에서도 뭐 관련 연구들을 좀 많이 하고 있어서 그 데이터를 필요하면 그쪽에 이제 그 저기 네, 이야기를 해서 괜찮다고 하면 제공을 해줄 수는 있는데 그걸로 지금 하고자 하는 거를 이제 뭔가 충분히 네, 그런 레이블링이 되어져 있는 적절한 데이터인지는 내가 좀 확실하지는 않아요. 근데 그 레이블링 자체가 사실 코코 데이터 코코 데이터 네, 이런 거 네, 보면 네. 그게 사람이 다 일일이 하는 건가요? 네. 그막 팔만 개 그걸 다 일일이. 네. 그래서 이제 그 부분 또잘 모르겠어. 네? 그 라벨링을 어떻게 해야 돼? 그 레이블링 이게 어떻게 보면 제일 중요한 문제거든요. 아, 그게 네. 레이블링을 직접 지금 보, 뭐 학생들이 시, 직접 하겠다 그러면은 좀 약간 답이 안 나오고요. 아. 네. 네. 그래서 아뭐네 그런 얘기를 안 했나? 일단은 좀 아이디어나 여러 가지, 네. 하여튼 생각할 수 있는 뭐 머신러닝이야 뭐 여기저기 뭐 적용하면 뭐, 네. 뭐 예제 데이터들 잔뜩 주, 잔뜩 주고 뭐 이렇게 그거는 문제가 아닌데 이제 중요한 거는 그런 태스크 세팅 혹은 프로블럼 세팅에 이제 적절하게 이제 사용할 수 있는 학습 데이터가 이미 레이블된 데이터가 있는 거를 사실 좀 
방법이잖아요. 음, 확보를 음, 하는 게 음. 그러니까 그게 없으면 거꾸로 이제 레이블을 직접 해야 된다. 근데 어떻게 보면은 없는 그런 상태에서 레이블을 하는 노력이나 시간이 90% 이상이에요. 어떻게 보면 음. 머신러닝 돌리는 시간보다. 그래서 뭐. 사회적 좋은 생각이 아닌 아이디. <웃음> 네, 근데 지금 하여튼 텍스트 투 이미지 제너레이션을 하겠다. 는 거죠. 아, 네. 그 신청을 해야 돼. 근데 만화로, 만화로. 네. 이번 어, 이번 그 대사를 어떻게 딸 수가 있나? OCR 같은 걸. 나 같은 경우는 이제 웹툰 가지고 이제 컬러라이제이션 같은 걸좀 많이 하는데. 그러니까 흑백 혹은 이제 밑그림만 준거 네. 이미지를 주고 이제 그거는 이제 어떻게 하냐면 보통 웹툰을 크롤링을 해서 그 사진 한장 있으면 그거에서 이제 스케치 혹은 그, 네, 그 윤곽선만 뽑을 수 있는 알고리즘 같은 게좀 있어요. 적당히 쓸수 있는 코드들이. 그럼 그걸 이렇게 아, 윤곽선을 뽑아서 이제 그 윤곽선을 입력으로 그 다음에 이 아웃풋은 이 채색된 이, 이걸로 하는 거죠. 그럼 이거는 이제 어쨌건 이미지 상에서 우리가 뭔가 알고리즘을 통해서 추출할 수 있는 레이 인풋 그래서 인풋과 아웃풋의 관계를 이렇게 페어드 된 이미지를 이런 식으로 그러니까 알고리즘에 의해서 자동으로 만들어낼 수가 있는 건데 아, 그러니까 코코 데이터 같은 경우는 이제 텍스트와 이미지가 뭐 네, 이미 사람들이 다 그걸 해놓은 거고요 만화는 또 그런 게좀 없으니까 네. 라벨링한 데이터를 못 찾으면 주제를 바꾸는 게 좋은 선택지인 네. 거, 거, 거죠. 현실적으로는 네. 현실적으로는 뭐한 6개월 동안 레이블링만 해도 될수 있고 그래서 이게 저 이게 스택간에서 약간 이해가 안 됐던 부분이 그 네. 자, 작은 새를 네. 학습을 시켜서 네. 이제 이미지에 따라서 새를 내놓잖아요. 네. 아니 그 텍스트에 네. 따라서 네. 그러면 네. 그 새, 그 새에서 뭐 윙이라던가 불이라던가 이런 부분을 다 세, 이렇게 라벨링을 해서 넣어서 그게 가능했던 건가요? 아 그게 부분 부분 이제 레이블링을 한건 아니고요. 네. 그 이미지가 있으면 네. 이 이미지에 대해서의 그 캡션을 사람이 다른 거죠. 뭐 빨간 불을 아, 가지고 이제 파란 알겠어요. 날개를 가진 새가 나무 아. 위에 앉아 있다. 뭐 이런 캡션. 그러면 이게 새가 아니라 그런 막 배경이랑 뭐 오브젝트가 여러 개인 이미지들을 고려를 하게 되면은 그게 라벨링이 되어 있어야 되는 게 되는 거죠. 새는 그렇게 해도 되는데. 네? 그러니까 네. 새는 뭐 네. 빨간 부리를 가진 네. 빨간 부리를 가지 뭐 작은 부리를 가지고 뭐 빨간 날개를 가진 이런 새가 있다 이렇게 이렇게 네. 이미지랑 같이 네. 넣으면 넣어서 학습 시키 네. 시키면 네. 나오는 거잖아요. 네. 근데 보니까 좀 복잡한 사진 같은 경우는 네. 코코 데이터 사진 같은 경우는 라벨링을 해서 넣은 건가요? 그러면은? 코코가 그냥 그렇게 돼 있는 거예요. 네, 그러니까, 그러니까, 그러니까 라벨링, 아니, 라벨링이 되어 있는 걸로 하잖아요. 네. 그러니까 복잡한 그림들, 코코 데이터 같이 오브젝트가 여러 개고 막 네. 배경이 있고 네. 이러한 그림들은 그렇게 그 줄글로 해서는 못 들어가고 라벨링을 해서 넣어야 되는 건가요? 아, 그 줄글이 되어져 있죠. 줄글이 아. 되어져 있는데 그 줄글에 그러니까 코코 데이터가 그냥 이미지 있고 네. 그 이미지에 대해서 사람들로 하여금 그냥 설명글을 다르시오라고 해서 네. 그 달린 그 설명글 여러 개들을 그냥 모아놓은 거한 다섯 개 정도씩 모아놓는다 그런 거거든요. 네. 네. 그게 이제 코코 데이터예요. 네. 그러면 이제 프리 텍스트로 된그 이제 캡션이 있고 네. 그걸 입력을 주어서 이제 이 이미지가 나오도록 학습을 하는 거죠. 네. 근데 뭐 예를 들면 이그 레이블링 그러니까 이 텍스 캡션이라는 게 이게 뭐 예를 들면 여기에 뭐 우리가 미리 정해놓은 뭐백 개면 백 개, 천 개면 천개 중에 카테고리 중에 뭐가 있는지를 선택하시오. 뭐 이런 식으로 레이블링이 된게 아니라 그냥 사용자 아니면 사람들로 하여금 그냥 자유롭게 그냥 설명글을 달아라라고 아~ 하고 해서 만들어진 데이터인 거죠. 아~ 그러면 이제 공통적으로 이제 캡션에서 등장하는 어떤 사진이 100장 있고 그 100장을 뭐총 100명의 사람들이 혹은 이제 뭐 500명의 사람들이 뭐한장한 한 장씩을 이렇게 좀 여러 번 달았다라고 하면 한 장의 사진당 이제 캡션이 이제 뭐한 다섯 개씩 이렇게 달리고요. 그러면 이제 그거를 이제 이거를 텍스트를 입력으로 이제 이미지를 이제 아웃풋으로 줘서 이제 학습을 이렇게 하는 거거든요. 그러면 이제 사람들이 단 캡션 중에는 그러니까 프리디파인드 된 어떤 정해진 뭐 명시적인 카테고리는 없지만 그래도 뭐 그래도 뭐 저기 새가 있으면 사람들이 다 공통적으로 제일 저 사진은 뭔가 새가 들어간 형 새가 들어간 문장을 표현할 거고 그렇잖아요. 그러니까 이제 그런 새라는 어떤 공통적으로 나타나는 그 컨셉을 얘가 배우고 그거가 이제 어떤 형태의 이제 이미지로 나타내어져야 될지를 배우는 거죠. 
이해했어요. 나 물어보고 있어요. 어? 나 물어보고 있어요. 어. 네, 아, 감사합니다. 네. 네. 그 이번 겨울에 이쪽에 있어서 좀 진지하게 좀더 깊게 공부해보고 싶은 생각이 네. 수업하면서 드는데 네. 혹시 뭐 